Well, greetings, kingdom greetings. Amen. I'm so glad that you joined. This is Fresh Fire Broadcast, and I am Prophetess Dr. Gwendolyn Bradley, and you are joining me on the Women in Ministry TV broadcast. And I'm so thankful that you decided to join us today. What a blessing and what a wonderful season we are in as we are moving swiftly towards Resurrection Sunday. I love Resurrection Sunday. It reminds me, just like when we enter into a time of Holy Communion, it reminds me of the sacrifice that Jesus, that he paid only for me and for you as well. He paid that for you. He paid a great price for you, for your destiny, for your purpose, so that you can come into the knowledge of what your real identity is. And I encourage you, know who you are, know who you are in Christ Jesus. And as we are, as we are recording today, we are maybe about 20 days away from Resurrection Sunday. So we have time to prepare our hearts. Today is a good day that we would offer up our heart before the Lord Jesus Christ and whatever that needs to be adjusted, whatever we need to repent of, whatever weight or luggage that we're carrying that might hinder us from coming into true knowledge of what Christ did for each one of us when he emptied himself of all of his glory and came down here to earth to live as man. He was fully God, fully man, and he wanted to be acquainted with our sorrows. He wanted to be acquainted with everything that we would go through. So he came down here to uh, have a personal experience. Amen. So right now we are in the second week of teaching about the power of the blood. Let me tell you something. Anytime you mention the blood of Jesus, the enemy begins to tremble. If you just mention the name, the name of Jesus is powerful. Every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. I love mentioning his name because his name is wonderful. His name is counselor. His name is peace. His name is healer. So on today, we're going to begin teaching the second portion of a teaching that I began last week, talking about the power of the blood of Jesus and we were talking about the seven places that Jesus shed his blood. I know we think about the cross or the crucifixion when Jesus was on the cross. They speared him in the side. Yes, they nailed him in his hand. They nailed him in his feet. But there's actually seven places that we can look at on his body or second, or seven occurrences of him shedding blood from his body. And as he began to shed those blood in those, each one of those seven significant places that we're going to mention, we mentioned one, which was in the garden of Gethsemane. And that was when the night that Jesus was going to be crucified, it was after he had shared the Lord's Supper with the disciples. And he went out to the garden and he went into prayer because he knew what was facing him, a very heavy weight, a task. You know, when something is weighing on you, it can weigh on you to the point where it causes such distress in your emotions. And we see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, getting ready to go to the cross. And I refer to the passage in Luke, in Luke 22, because Luke is a doctor. And doctors are well acquainted with blood. So I wanted to use that passage. And we talked about as Jesus was praying, he went back to check on the disciples. They were asleep. He said, could you just tarry with me for an hour? We know the power in prayer. You have to labor in prayer. And I want to say to someone right now, get back to your prayer altar and Get back to a specific time of prayer at your prayer altar, meaning not just when you go to bed, before you go to sleep at night, say your, you know, the Lord say your prayer to go to sleep. Not just when you wake up in the morning and you get up and you say, Lord, thank you for giving me another day as you're on your way to brush your teeth or whatever. And that's important. 
Your prayer before you go to bed is important. Your prayer when you wake up is important. But I'm talking about a specific, a specific set aside prayer that you would have to spend and to talk to the Lord. Uninterrupted time. So the disciples were sleeping and then he went back and it says three times he prayed and he asked the Lord to take that, that cup away from him, meaning the suffering was going to go through on the cross. But at the third time, he said, not my will, but let your will be done. And we see that through that, through Jesus deciding on his own accord, on his own will to say yes, that he won back our ability to say yes. You do have a choice. And that's what's so wonderful about our Lord and Savior. We have a choice. We have a choice. We're not made to do something. We can choose. We can choose to worship. We can choose to praise. We can choose to uh, not forsake the gathering of the saints or coming together. We can choose. And our choices have a significant uh, repercussions. So Jesus chose right there in that garden. He knew, although he knew what would be facing him, he made up in his mind to go to the cross. That's how great his love is for each one of us. And so we want to talk about the second place uh, that Jesus shed his blood. And, and let's go to the scriptures here. And amen. I want us to, uh, I want to pray for you as we go into this, because I know you've heard this several times, this passage, if you're joining, um, you heard it taught. But I want us to get a whole new level of understanding and revelation. Also appreciation for what Jesus did for us and to know, especially today, that there are benefits for being in the kingdom. There are benefits. And we will not forget the benefits. You know, Psalm 103 talks about the benefits that we have. And one of the benefits that we have is the power of the blood of Jesus that Jesus shed from his own life, from his own body, so that we can, ha we can have life, we can have healing, we can have deliverance, we can have salvation. Salvation is not the only thing that Jesus secured when he went to the cross, but healing, deliverance, breakthrough, come on somebody, everything that you need. So let's go to the scriptures, amen, and let's see what the word of God has to say to us on today. So, Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Now, I also want to give you another, give you, remind you of the background for the seven places. And we can see it in the Old Testament. We know that Jesus is revealed um, in, in the Old Testament. When you look at Leviticus 16, 19, it says, he shall sprinkle, talking about the priests, when they go in to make the sacrifices, he shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times to cleanse it and to consecrate it from the uncleanness of the Israelites. So when they sprinkle the blood seven times, the priests, when they made the sacrifices, when they sprinkled the blood seven times, that was an indication of what Jesus would do, the shedding of his blood in seven places um, as he was on his way to the crucifixion and even during the crucifixion. Luke 22, 44 is where we get the passage that I spoke about earlier about Jesus, the first time him shedding his blood. Luke 22, 44. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. So here we are at the second place that Jesus shed his blood, and I want you to go to Matthew 27, 26. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. So it was the Roman governor, Pilate, that ordered Jesus flogged with 39 lashes, just 
one under the Romans legal limit understood which the limit was 40. Now I've heard many physicians talk about that there are 39 major diseases or classes of diseases that are in the earth realm today. I, I, I really believe that's going to be more as we come to the end time. But we'll say because this has been proven by the physicians and we uh, we know that Jesus is a healer, but there are 39 classes of diseases that are in the earth. And as Jesus offered himself up to be crucified, as he was flogged there, he was beaten, beaten with chains and his, his flesh was ripped open on his back that he did not stop. He stood there and he took the beating. Come on, somebody. Because he wanted our healing to be complete. He didn't want to leave any area untouched. Any area, any one of those 39 areas of diseases, they're all covered under the blood of Jesus. Whatever you think about, you know, even COVID-19 with this, we are in a pandemic. I want you to know that COVID-19, whatever else comes, whatever pestilence, whatever disease might come into the earth, the people of God, because of the blood of Jesus, you are covered and your healing has already been purchased. So I want to talk about that because there's some of you out there right now, you are believing God for a healing. It can be a, it doesn't have to be a physical healing or dealing with a disease uh, that you have been diagnosed with. You know, the, the woman with the issue of blood, she had been diagnosed with, with a disease and that, that she had visited many doctors and they could not help her. She had spent a lot of money trying to get help. And no matter who she went to, they could not help her. Not until, not until she met Jesus because she heard about him coming to her city. And I want you to know that there's a visitation coming to your home and Jesus knows where you are. If you're in the hospital right now watching this broadcast, if you're in prison watching this broadcast, there's a visitation coming to you. And there's healing being made available to you. Amen. And But she said to herself when she found out that he would be coming to her city. And we find that passage in uh, Matthew. I'm sorry, Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 29. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. And she has suffered many things from many physicians. She has spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, come on, somebody. When she heard about Jesus, you're hearing about Jesus now. And you're hearing about the sacrifice that he made, how he suffered how he was beaten with 39 strikes, the second place where he shed blood from his body, how the skin on his back was ripped open, but he was bruised for your iniquities and the chastisement of your peace was upon him. And by his stripes, those 39 stripes, by his stripes that he took, 39 diseases, classes of diseases, he has purchased your healing. So she heard about these things and she had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her afflictions. So she has suffered mentally. Can you imagine now, when you are in that type of state, you cannot be among family. You cannot be among others. And just like COVID-19, the, the most difficult thing for some of us was the isolation. We could not get our mind around or wrap our mind around the fact that we could not gather at church and we could not hug anybody. We couldn't be strengthened. We underestimate the power of a hug. 
and the power of touch, the ministry of touch. So she could not be around her family. She could not be around her, her friends. And she has to suffer in isolation. But here we see determination in action. For she was determined to get her breakthrough. She was determined to touch the hem. She said, if I could but just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. And so here she is coming behind him in the crowd. She touched his garment and immediately, somebody say immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed from her her affliction. Now, um, I want to say something. Whenever we teach about the blood of Jesus, as I mentioned before, enemy, the enemy and demons begin to tremble because there's power over the enemy by the blood of Jesus. Whenever we teach about healing, I believe that healing will manifest in your body. So on today, what I wanted to do was remind you that no matter what you're going through in your body and no matter what you are dealing with in your mind, that Jesus has already taken care of it at the cross. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, I don't deserve to be healed. I don't have enough faith to be healed. Well, Luke 12 and 32, it says, do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. If the father is pleased to give you the kingdom, and we know that healing is in the kingdom of God, I want you to know that you can put your name in there where it says, give you the kingdom. I want you to put your name there and you can know that even you, whatever it is that you're going through. Some of you, I, I feel in my spirit, the Lord just spoke to me. Some of you are suffering greatly emotionally. You've been disappointed. Um, you have been betrayed. You have suffered greatly, silently, um, for words that's been spoken over you. Maybe some of you even in your own home. And I want to minister to you and tell you that Jesus knows all about your trouble. And he sees you in the midst of your suffering. And he, and, and, and I believe that he see you wallowing in your blood of affliction. And he's, he's passing by your home and he's saying, you shall live and not die. You shall live and not die. You're not going to die in the midst of this emotional distress. You're not going to die in the midst of this depression. But the power of the blood of Jesus, I speak over your life and I say, rise up, man of God. Rise up, woman of God. Rise up out of that disappointment and know that there is a touch that's able to make you whole on today because Jesus is the same. If he healed you before, he can heal you again. If he saved your soul, as I said, salvation is not the only thing that the blood of Jesus secures, but it secures our healing. If he saved you before, if he did it before, he can do it again. He's the same yesterday, forever, today, and forevermore. Jesus is the same. He's the same God that spoke to you while you were in that church worship service or while you were listening to that teaching and that man and woman of God was ministering to you and you knew, you felt like God had cleared the room and you were the only person in the room and that he was right there on your street. He was right there in your home ministering to you. So this is one of those days where the Lord is saying he's speaking peace to you just like he spoke over the woman with the issue of blood. This is what he said to her in Mark chapter five, verse 34. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. Oh my God, that's a powerful statement right there. Go in peace. See, that took care of the mental torment the emotional torment that she had been going through. And he said, go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Oh my. Oh my. Be freed from your suffering. 
men and women of God. Do you know I did some research and what I found out that if we are believing God for a, a healing, there are 12 systems, 12 systems in our body that, and I want to let you know that those 39 stripes took care of each one of those systems. And I, that's what I want to talk to you about right now. I want to talk to you and I want to declare healing and tell you about these 12 systems that the blood of Jesus is moving in the midst of right now in your body. And I want you to receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. There are 12 systems in the body, according to the medical profession. The first system is the skeletal system. And that's the framework of your body that is held together by your tendons, your ligaments, and your cartilage. And some of you, maybe you're having some issues in your cartilage. You've been told you need a knee replacement surgery. Well, I want to tell you, I want you to lift your hand and receive it because God is working on your skeletal system right now, the blood of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus to your skeletal system, to your tendons right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We think we think we believe and we decree that you can grow new cartilage. You can grow new cartilage in your knee, in your elbow, in your shoulder, in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of you are having been told you need a rotator cuff surgery. And we speak healing over you. We speak heal. We say if there's a tear, the blood of Jesus is able to mend that tear. He's mending tears in the in the, in the in the rotator cuff. He's mending that tear in your knee. He's mending you. He's strengthening you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Be released. Be healed right now. Be set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the next system is the nervous system. Oh, I want to go back to the skeletal, to, to that system. Osteoporosis. Uh, uh, osteoporosis. And that is the disorder of the prevalent of... Uh, this disorder is prevalent in the elderly. Now, we know that God is able to renew our youth like the eagle. I believe that. I believe that God, he can renew, he can restore in this month of March. And we talked about commanding our month of March and how March used to be the first month on the Roman calendar. And they changed it to the third month. It was the month that they go out to war. And I want to speak over your life. It March, you can get a new beginning. As we are now in a new time change, we're in a new time change. Time has gone up an hour. And I want to say that your, 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 your healing is going to spring forth speedily. It's springing forth. Doesn't matter about your age. God does not consider your age in order to release a healing over your body. So in the name of Jesus, we speak to every elderly, every wisdom saint, and we say receive the strength of the Lord right now. If you're listening to me from an assisted living, if you're listening to me from a nursing home, if you're listening to me from the hospital, I say lift your hand and receive renewal over your skeletal system now. God is doing it now in Jesus' name. And let's do that. Let's go over this nervous system. I know I'm not going to complete these today. We're going to have to do a part three. And you know what? I want you all to come back next week because we're going to do a part three and we're going to pray over all of these, these uh, systems in your body. And we're going to believe God for healing. It's never too late. I said, it's never too late for God to release a move of God over your body. So the third, the second system is the nervous system. And that's a network of nerve cells and fibers that transport nerve impulse, impulses throughout the body. In the body system, it's made up of the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerves. Now, some things that are associated with that is Parkinson's disease, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, um, also, Huntington's disease, Alzheimer's disease. Oh, in the name of Jesus. 
We speak life over your brain system, over your nervous system. And we thank you, God, that you are reversing Parkinson's disease. I thank you, Lord, that you're sending up fire. You're releasing your fire over our memory. Some of you have been losing your memory. And in the name of Jesus, we speak over your memory and we say that your memory is being restored in the mighty name of Jesus. You need to just go ahead and lay your hands on your head and just speak life over your over that area, over your head, over where your brain is. Just speak life. I shall not lose my memory. We bind up Parkinson's disease. We bind up multiple sclerosis. We bind up Alzheimer's disease right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel, oh, I'm so excited. I love it when the Lord released his word because it said in his word, it said he released, he sent his word. He sent his word and he healed them in the name of Jesus. We also speak over the third system is the muscular system. And so that aids in movement, blood flow, and bodily functions. And some of the things that uh, we can look at it in the um, in the muscular system is uh, polymyositis, and that results in inflammation, progressive weakening of the skeletal system. So we know that our posture is important having a good posture so that it won't be your, your posture won't your, your skeletal system won't be, won't be compromised. So we speak life. We speak strength over your skeletal system. Some of you having some issues in your back, but the Lord said he's giving you a bounce back anointing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak a bounce back anointing over your, over your skeletal, over your muscular system right now in the name of Jesus, your muscles. And on the fourth area is the respiratory system. We know that the enemy has been attacking the respiratory system with COVID-19, the lungs. And um, also there are different muscles of resp respiration. And so this is the system that brings oxygen and it expels carbon dioxide. And we just speak life, life. You breathe, breathe. Breathe. The, the, may the wind of the Holy Spirit come upon you even now that your, your respiratory system shall be strong. And we root out all COVID-19 repercussions. Now, uh, many have been suffering at, from the after effects of COVID-19. They have been having issues in their lungs and um, different things going on in their body as a result of this. So we speak that COVID-19 is completely being rooted out of your body. It shall not stick. It shall not hold on. It shall not try to hide in your respiratory system. It shall not hide in your cells. It shall not hide in your body. You're being released right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We cancel influenza. We cancel pneumonia. We cancel asthma. We cancel a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, otherwise known as COPD. We say that your body is being healed right now in Jesus' name. Your body's being healed of COVID-19 in the, in the name of Jesus. No more attacks on the lung. We apply the blood of Jesus to the lung that will try to cause upper respiratory tract illness in the name of Jesus. In the fifth system is the endocrine system. And this is a collection of glands that secrete hormones into the circulatory system to be delivered to the body's vital organs. And you know we need that. That regulates our metabolism. And I believe I can get some sisters to agree with me and say, I apply the blood of Jesus to my metabolism. My metabolism shall not slow down, but it shall be able to function properly the way the Lord has designed for it to prosper in the, in, in the function in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for this system. We cancel hypoglycemia. We cancel hypothyroidism in the name of Jesus. These are the things that uh, women, women have lots of issues with this. And the enemy try to slow down our metabolism. But we speak life. We speak life over our indoctrine, indoctrine system right now 
and we speak life over the immune system. We speak, we say that our body is defending, it's defending against bacteria, it's defending against viruses and other pathogens that would try to enter into our immune system. There are some of you, you have been impacted by lupus and we speak healing over your body. We say lupus shall have no authority over you in this season. Any, uh, any rheumatoid arthritis, we speak against it right now. We apply the blood of Jesus and we say that rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis and lupus shall not be your portion. God is rooting it out. He's rooting it out of your system. He's given us wisdom on what uh, foods we need to eliminate from our diet, what foods we need to add to our diet. And of course, the car cardiovascular circulatory system and that transports um, nutrients. It permits blood to circulate and transport nutrients, oxygen, carbon dioxide, hormones, and blood cells to fight diseases. And it stabilizes our temperature. We thank you, oh, Father God, that you're speaking, you're laying your hand right now uh, over our cardiovascular and circulatory system. And our blood shall flow. The blood shall flow. Not only the blood of Jesus flowing, it's flowing from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. It's covering us. But also our blood, the blood in our body shall flow. We speak life over all the blood and we say it shall flow flow, no blockage, no hindrance, get into our organs, get into the cells, get into our joints, getting into the places in our body that it needs to flow so that we can have life. And we thank you, oh God, we cancel strokes and hypertension. And if you have suffered from a stroke, we speak healing over your body. If you're suffering from hypertension, high blood pressure, we cancel that right now. And we thank you that you shall not be on high blood pressure medication all of your life, but the Lord is going to give you wisdom and he's going to give you the strength and give you the fortitude to be able to eliminate those things out of your diet that needs to be eliminated so that your circulatory and your cardiovascular system can be healthy. We speak that over your life in the mighty name of Jesus and also the urinary system. And we cancel any type of kidney disease. We know we have many people that are on dialysis even now and we just speak life we know we know i know that you feel like you're going to be hooked up to that machine on a dialysis the rest of your life but let me tell you something god is a healer jesus is a healer those 39 strikes he took on his back to complete your healing and i want you to know that healing is available to you woman of god you may be watching this while you're having um that type of treatment, dialysis treatment. But I want you to know that healing is available. And we could we thank you that we speak life over that treatment as that as your blood go back into your body. May it be cleansed, may it be purified, may it go to the places in your body that it needs to go to in the mighty. I feel this, I feel the anointing in this live on tonight. I feel healing going forth over this live on tonight in the 10th system. I thought we wasn't gonna complete this, but we are. The Holy Spirit said complete it. So we're now we're on the integumentary system, and this is our organ system, organ system that protects the body from damage, loss of water, or abrasion from the outside. The body includes human hair, um, nail, and skins. So we speak life, receive it, women of God, receive that, receive this refreshing over our integumentary system. And we thank you, Father, right now. And Father, help us to drink the water that we need. You, The water is the word. The water represents refreshing. The water represents, oh, wow. Oh, revival. We speak revival. God is reviving. God is restoring. He's going to give you an appetite to drink water again. Not only the physical water that we need, but also the spiritual water, the water of the word. Amen. And also that will protect us against warts and acne um so we speak blessings over our skin it was you remember sarah she was way up in age and she was still a beautiful woman because she was beautiful by the anointing come on so thank you lord god that you're able to do this even for us right now in the reproductive system and i want to pray right now over some maybe someone is trying to have a baby you're trying to get pregnant and I want to speak healing over your womb right now. We speak life over your womb. 
and we say that life is coming to your womb, even as we just spoke about Sarah, Sarah said, you know, uh, God told Abraham, is anything too hard for me? You know, I speak that over you. It doesn't matter about your age. If you want a baby, I want to believe God with you. I want to connect my faith with you tonight. And I say that be healed, your womb, let it become fruitful. I speak life over your womb right now. And not only shall you begin to give birth and you shall be, uh, you shall be fruitful in the, in the, in the, in the natural, but also fruitful in the spiritual. Some of you, maybe your assignments have dried up and, and you don't, and you're wondering about that. So Lord, we speak life over ministries. We thank you right now. That's even the churches that had shut their doors. They're going to begin to go back for Resurrection Sunday. We speak that, Father God, that your people are returning. We know that the church is not the four walls. We are the church, but we speak life that the people of God are returning back to church, that we will be productive, we will be fruitful in our ministries, in Jesus' name. And the last system is the digestive system. And yes, 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 we thank God. We thank God that the Lord is healing us that we will be able to get the right nutrients in our body and there will be no Crohn's disease. There'll be no irritable, irritable bowel syndrome because the Lord is speaking like this healing coming over that our digestive system. Well, people got, we got through, we did, we were able to get through the 12 system and remember those 39 stripes that Jesus took on his back. That was for each one of those systems in our body. No matter what you're dealing with, the Lord is able to heal. So right now we're going to pray. I want to thank God for the woman of God, the visionary of this ministry, Evangelist Jack Jacqueline. We want to thank God for her. And I want you to pray for this ministry. And also I want you to sow a word into, sow um, a seed into this word, uh, Cash App, Women in Ministry TV. Sow a seed. I believe that the seed, that we, you can connect through a seed put a seed on the altar and we're believing God. It just allows your faith to become vibrant. Come on now, connect with the word. The Lord is releasing healing on tonight. And I want you to sow into women in ministry TV as this brought this platform is being used to take the word, to take the word into the nation, to take the word into those places that we cannot go in now. And I just believe God that this is word going to come forth in the prisons. This word is going to come forth and go forth into nursing homes, into the hospital. Those of you that even on your job, even while you're on your job and you even have your earbuds in, receive the word of the Lord. Healing is coming to your house. Healing is coming to your family. Even now, because of this second place where Jesus shed his blood, his back, his back, they whipped him on his back. 39 stripes he took it. And by your stripe, by his stripes, we are healed. By his stripe, we have been set free. By his stripe, we have been delivered. So right now, I just want to pray over you. And I want to pray according to, as I said, we're about 20 days out of Resurrection Sunday. And I want to release. I want to remind you of this particular word coming from the 20th number of Psalm. In times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. May the name of the God of Jacob keep you safe from all harm. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you from Jerusalem. That is the 20th number of Psalm, verses one and two. And if you are sowing a seed, I wanna pray over your seed right now that your seed, come on, that the harvest would manifest, that it would come forth. May he remember, this is verse three of Psalm 20. May he remember all your gifts and look favorably on your burnt offering. Oh my. Oh, wow. What a word. I might sow a seed on this myself in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, I just thank you on today. God, those that you had joined at this particular time, it was you that brought them into the broadcast. May this word be released over their bodies, over their minds, their emotions, over their family members that they're concerned about that are in the hospital or suffering from COVID-19. Let this word go forth over the nations and may healing come forth speedily in the mighty the mighty name of Jesus, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Amen. God bless you, people of God.
Thank you so much for joining. Meet me here next week. We'll talk about that third place where Jesus shed his blood. God bless you. Yeah.